It is so good to be here, and I'm so happy that Gab said that, you know, we're not in a rush. I am American, clearly, but I'm from the South, and what we can do well is we can talk. So, yeah, thank you for that invitation, and we're going to try to get this done. But really thrilled to be here from the U.S. Uh, many of you all know that in the U.S. we just celebrated a couple of significant holidays, right? So at the end of June, we had Juneteenth. And Independence Day was July 4th, and Juneteenth is a celebration of freedom for black Americans, whereas Independence Day obviously is a celebration of um, the country's freedom. And so I have to say that we went into this holiday season pretty somber, right, with the state of what's going on in the world. And like many families, mine gathered together over the holidays, and we just had some conversations um, and shared our diverse views on everything, ranging from uh, you know, the Supreme Court's ruling on women's reproductive health to the Supreme Court's ruling around um, environmental protection um, and what's going on in society today. And one of our family's elders said something that I thought was very, very important. He said that, you know what? Companies are really stepping up, and I think they might get it right this time. They might get it right this time. And so my takeaway from that is that corporations, companies, um, they're doing something differently now they haven't done in the past. And the thing that they're doing differently is that they are empowering the workers, the employees. We have agency now to move forward with some key initiatives. And I want to talk about some of these key initiatives that we have the power to move forward with. But what I really want to do is introduce why I'm here today. And that's to celebrate you, to celebrate open source developers and really what you are doing. I want to celebrate the fact that you have the blueprint for inclusion, for in valuing other perspectives, for accessibility, and really for making sure that there is a community of people who feel that their contributions can lead to something greater, whether it's a technology or a platform, but they feel that their contributions can lead to something bigger and better and greater. And what I want to talk about is, first of all, to celebrate you for creating that community. And secondly, to give a couple of use cases around how that might be able to be applied to your business, that inclusion model, as well as how that could be applied to broader society and then we'll talk a bit about the how. So how do we apply our learnings from this inclusive model, this model of collaboration? How do we apply that um, to our businesses and to greater society? We already know that information flow is important. Knowledge sharing is important. And that's what you do really well. And that's what companies want. They want to see more information flowing. They want knowledge sharing. They want people to feel inclusive because we've seen study after study that when we feel valued and we feel included in a process and we feel that we can collaborate with others, that's when we do our most creative work. Creativity leading to innovation, leading to revenue generation for the firm, but also leading to revenue generation for the employee, which means that the communities that the employees live and where they do business, those become wealthy as well, wealthy from a financial perspective as well as from a cultural perspective, from a societal health perspective. And I want to talk a bit about how we do that, how you do that, and how you might be able to apply that into the businesses and into the social settings where you're doing business, um, communities, your anti-siloed approach. So before we get there, I want to just share a couple of key terms that I think will help us bridge over from the how we do it in the open source community into how we can do it socially and in our businesses. And by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion? Okay, a good number. So we'll just do um, a brief. We have um, a love of acronyms here. So DEI and then ESG. How many of you have heard of ESG? Okay, so about the same. So as we know, diversity, equity, inclusion is really talking about ensuring that people feel included in a process, which is what the open source community is about. Inclusion, collaboration, valuing different perspectives. Equity, making sure that there is parity there, pay parity. No matter who you are, if you're doing the same work as me, we should be paid the same. Um, and then diversity, we want our businesses to reflect the communities and the clients that give us business. And obviously the developer community really appreciates and embraces that as well. 
Now, ESG, environmental, social, and governance, when we talk about ESG, a lot of people think about climate and what we're doing to reduce our carbon footprint. And that's part of it. Governance, which is the G, we'll get to the S later. Governance, which is talking about corporate ethics and how corporations govern themselves, board structures, that sort of thing. That's a key part of it as well. But what I want to focus on today is the social aspect. Social can be not just what's going on in the broader community externally, but also what's going on inside the business, the people inside your business. Are they feeling that they need to be there, want to be there, and that what they're doing is valuable? So that's the social piece, and that leads clearly to social change when we talk about that. Now, going to the use cases that I mentioned, Again, I want to just really reiterate that what you are doing in terms of opening up your communities and making sure that we have diverse representation and making sure people feel that they are important, that that can be reflected in society as well as in business. And in society, I'll talk about um, a use case that many of us know. I want to talk about credit. Right? So we know that in many times having good credit leads to financially healthy communities, people, etc. And I'll share a story with you. When I was um, in college, I got bombarded with, with credit card, university, you know, mail, email. They sent me lots of credit card applications. I'm sure that's a story for many of you all. So when I got all these credit card applications in my email, I decided to go to my own personal financial guru. Now, this is a woman who knew more than anybody I knew about finance. I knew she'd lead me in the right direction. This was my college roommate, 19 years old herself. That was a smart move, wasn't it? I went to another 19-year-old for financial advice. So went to my college roommate and said, oh, wise scribe, tell me what I should do. I got all these, these applications for credit card companies, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, oh, let me tell you what I did. So when I graduated high school, I took out a credit card because I wanted to go to the island. So I got a credit card. I'm like, yes, this is why I came to you. So I could hear about this. Took out a credit card, went on vacation, got the bill. That was a year and a half ago. I'm still paying for it. I said, oh, wait, huh, huh what? I didn't expect that. Then she went on to tell me I also got some other credit cards and now I'm getting a loan and I got a balloon payment on the car and it just went downhill from there. So I decided that maybe she wasn't the financial guru that I needed in my life at that time. So I then went to others who were able to share with me some information about credit and how to establish credit. But think about if we opened up that process, if it was a bit more transparent, if young people, university age people, underserved communities, if they knew a bit more about how to establish credit and how to maintain a good credit score, think about how that would help them financially, an individual, as well as their community, right? And I'm not saying that open source and sharing source code could solve the issue, but what could solve the issue is really promoting transparency in the way that business is done really making sure that knowledge sharing is there, whether it's your bank or a credit agency for those of us who work there, sharing knowledge around best practices, educating people, making sure that communities are engaged and know about the importance of good credit instead of going to their college roommates who you know, probably had the worst credit score that anybody's ever had. But sharing information that can really promote good financial health. And we see here that you know, this is an American statistics talking about um, communities, one in nine Hispanic consumers in America have below 620. That shouldn't be. Applying open source accessibility, applying knowledge sharing that you do in your jobs, applying that to the broader business in this context is important. So the other piece that I want to talk about, going from how the broad accessibility um, openness can be applied to the broader society into how it can be applied into our businesses. And by a show of hands, how many of us know how we can get promoted at work? We are very clear on what the steps are to get a promotion. Okay, all three of us are very clear on how to get a promotion. We got this down. Okay, well good for us. So for the rest of us, we can all safely assume that it's kind of opaque. We, you know, we might have job descriptions that we have or we understand what the bands are and that's clearly written out. But other than what's on our internal site, we have some questions around how we can get promoted, how we can move up. And it's not just us in this room, right? There are loads of people who have that issue. Now, again, taking the blueprint 
of the open source community, which is all about knowledge sharing, which is all about contribution. Think about inner sourcing. So think about the way that others in the organization can use their expertise to help with a greater goal, right? So we have the legal function. We have the HR function who really, they're kind of the masterminds at this point um, when it comes to promotions, hiring. We have the administrative function. Think about those functions working together to make sure that everyone has a very clear view on how to get promoted, how to get hired. And that could be something simple such as, you know, tell us what questions you have, you administrative you know, team members. What questions do you have around promotion? How can we make this clearer? Legal folks, tell us how we could speak to this and reduce some of the legal ease that we have in some of these, um, these websites and the content. How could we, what do we need to say? And what do we have to say? And how can we say it in a simpler way? You know, technologists, how can we make sure that we bring in the people that we need to bring in? What do we need to say in these job postings? How do we need to look at promotions? What are some of the key characteristics that you want to see in your leaders? You know, so that's the way we could really use inner sourcing. Look at the people that we have in our organizations and really ask them to support, to contribute to a simpler process, a simpler procedure, simpler language. So we can all be on the same page about how we can bring in talent into an organization and how we can get promoted ourselves and help others to get promoted. So again, using that blueprint, if you will, around openness, accessibility, knowledge sharing, and applying it to business settings. So the key part of this is to really get a sense of why we want to do this. And obviously we want to create better businesses. We want to create better places to work. We want to create better societies, but also how do we do this? So, you know, Kisa, that's great. Yeah, I know we're open. I know we have these great communities. I know we're all about accessibility and inclusion. But how do I take what we do in my open source community and apply it to business? Well, I'm glad you asked. One way that we can do this is to simply go to our management teams and say, you know what? I know that we're hearing right now a lot about inclusion, a lot about how we can bring in diverse perspectives and how we can help employees feel valued. Well, in my community, I have access to a couple of policies that we've put in place to do that. And I'd like to share with you how we've managed to do that in this community. And maybe that can support some of the initiatives that management has. We can go to our ERGs, employee resource groups, also known as BRGs, business resource groups. And we can join them and say, you know, there are some things that we're doing in the open source community that I think could be applied here. I think that we could help other people feel valued, could really help them feel respected. If we changed our language, you all have great governance policies around, you know, if you want to contribute, these are our rules. Make sure you use respectful language. Make sure that you're respectful in this way. I think we can apply that language piece to what we're doing here. I think we could apply that accessibility piece or I think we could invite other people from other groups to contribute to projects, to contribute to the policies that we have in HR. It's as simple as that. You all are experts. You all have done a fantastic job of creating this open, accessible, inclusive communities. Businesses want your opinion. Businesses need your expertise in how to create this inclusive environment. And that's what I want to leave with you in terms of really looking at the how, how do you do this? Now I want to end on um, a parable that I really appreciate. And for those of you who are biblical scholars, I'm going to ask for your forgiveness now because this is not a direct quote. Um, but this is my interpretation of this parable around this, um, we'll call this person, and I think in, it says a manager, we'll call this person an executive director. Um, and the people, their partners that they work with. So there's an executive director who goes out of town for a couple of months and I'm going to, you know, going to Barcelona, gonna, gonna get some sun and some fun there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave some coins with you all and I wanna see when I come back what you were able to do with the coin. So the um, executive director left five coins with one person, said, hey, I'm gonna leave these five coins with you. I'm gonna be gone for a couple of months, see when I get back. Left two coins with the number, sorry, three, three coins, three coins with the other person said, hey, partner, leave these with you. See when I get back and third partner left one coin. Okay, I'm going to Barcelona. See you later, sun and fun. Boom, see when I get back. So fast forward two months. 
the executive director of the company is back. Went to the person that gave five points who said, ooh, I had so much fun. Look at me, I'm tanned, had a great time, sun and fun. You know those five points I gave you? What, were you manage what did you manage to do with them? <laughs> executive director said, you know, what did you manage to do with them? The person, the partner, their business associate said, I'm glad you asked. I took those five coins, I put them boom, boom, there, 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 and there. And guess what I was able to do? I was able to get five more coins. So see, Miss Executive Director, I gave you 10 coins. You gave me five, I'm giving you 10 back. The ED said, oh, well done, my good and faithful friend, well done. Let me go over here to the person I gave three coins to. So I gave you three coins, went to Barcelona. How were you able to hook it up? What were you able to do? That person said, well, Mrs. Executive Director, you gave me three coins, you went out of town, so what I did was I put those coins, boom, bam, bam, there, there, and there, and I was able to make three coins. Three coins? So that means you have six total? That means I have six coins total. The Executive Director said, well done, my good and faithful friend, well done, pat on the back. Went over to the third person and said, I gave you one coin, went to Barcelona, had some sun and fun, now I'm coming back to see if you were able to make it shake. What were you able to make happen with that one coin? And that person said, well, Miss Executive Director, you know, I know you work hard for your money. And I know you would be terribly upset, woefully upset, if anything happened to that one coin you gave me. So what I did was I buried it. So let, I'm going to go dig it up for you. Hold on. And the Executive Director said, wait, you, you buried it? Yeah, yeah. And here it is, your one coin back. And Miss Executive Director said, I'm so disappointed in you because when I give you something, my aim is for you to take it and build on it, apply it into other places, apply it elsewhere, and make it grow. And as I look at the people in this audience, I know you are like the partner who had five coins. You are taking the expertise that you have around open source governance, policies, a spirit and culture of inclusion, and you are making it grow. And from that growth, you'll inspire creativity in your businesses with employees and partners. And from there, they'll feel innovative because they know that they're valued. And from there, that will help the company prosper and continue. And also, it will help communities grow and gain wealth. You have the insight, you have the knowledge, and you have the power. Thank you so much.